Hi, my name is CJ and this is my RC channel. Okay, uh, servos are trimmed and I think I've come up with a mounting method that I like. Okay. I've had this stuff for years. Uh, it's a type of two-sided glue. It's like that sticky stuff that uh, comes, that attaches like a credit card to a piece of mail um, that you can just, you know, peel it up and it uh, kind of just wads up or whatever. Anyway, you could use any kind of two-sided tape you want. I would try to use something that's thin. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using a small amount of tape to attach them together. And once I have them lengthwise, then I'm going to take a piece of this double-sided, sided, excuse me, double-sided scotch tape. Um, you can get this at like Staples or Office Depot. And um, I'm going to put a strip of that down the length of this piece of fiberglass, at least the, the length that the servos are going to be on, and that will anchor them somewhat to this. Okay, then I'm going to take this type of tape and I'm going to wrap around the servos at their midsection here uh, multiple times around each one, further attaching them to this piece of fiberglass. Um, and then I will probably do a couple of rolls um, lengthwise. In fact, I may do the lengthwise first and then do the wraps, thus further sticking them together and then further sticking them uh, to the fiberglass. That should really lock them down and give me a nice little one-piece unit with all the servos on it together. Then that can be hot glued down to the uh, to the base of the fuselage um, when I'm ready to to get to that phase. In the meantime, I can put on my control arms. Um, I can uh, measure and trim linkages, things like that. Get everything ready. And the last step is going to be um, uh, probably bending the two linkages out here. Uh, for the ailerons and tying off the uh, the wire runs that go to the um, rudder and elevator. The loops at the tail end will probably be the ones that I do last. That's where I'll be like centering things up um, instead of trying to do it in the fuselage space. There just isn't room to work. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make the I'll I'll run the wire you know down two runs. I'll make the loops on, on the control arms here in the fuselage, and then they're done. And then I can pull them taut at the tail end and uh, make my loops around the, uh, the horns for the uh, rudder and elevator at the back, cinch them as tight as I can, or, you know, try to get them to the point where things are centered, maybe give a little bit of um, uh, movement of the servo in the opposite direction to allow for any slack that might get created. I'm gonna have to tinker with it and see what, how to make that work best, but I'll, I'll show you how that all goes. Um, but now, like I said, you can just uh, follow what I'm doing here if that's what you want. Um, so my next servo is gonna go on like this and the following servo will go on like this. Um, I'm trying to keep the, uh, the rudder and elevator as far forward as possible, but you know, not further forward than the ailerons. I thought about having uh, the two ailerons right here as close to each other as possible, um, but uh, in fact, I'm, I may do that. I'm thinking the reason I didn't initially do it is because of the, the way the wires are coming out right here on top of each other. Um, that's the downside. I wish the wires came out on the opposite side from the, uh, these, um, the headers here, because if they didn't, I could put these, you know, right like this and have the two ailerons control link lines be almost the exact same length. Not that that's really a big deal, but anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna go with this. Uh, it's the best way to do it without the you know, things kind of um, being a problem. Uh, because of the wire, you know, even if you bend it down tight, um, you can't really get it over the edge here. That's why I'm using this, this gooey tape here. 
um, because that provides a little bit of space so that I can have these be uh, more equally lined up, I guess you could say, as you can see, like the way this one is. So, like I said, uh, first taping them together and then taping them down to this with this really thin, light, two-sided tape and then wrapping uh, to, uh, to further anchor them. So, um, it's easy enough. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and show you how I did the first one. Um, I don't know if you can get this type of tape. You can check your uh, home supply store, office supply store uh, for something similar to this. Um, like I said, this is that as seen on TV stuff I bought a really long time ago. I don't know if they even make it anymore or, you know, that company in particular makes it. Okay, so... So, let's see, that's the side I want there, so... So first I got it stuck on like that, and I went over here with an X-Acto, and I'll try and get this so you can see better, and I cut away the excess, it really wants to just grab onto everything, this stuff is But see, there I have a nice layer. So now I can set these down on a firm surface. And stick them together. And as you can see, it holds pretty well. It's a good first step. So, um, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, everything that I'm going to do here, I'll put it in fast forward so that you can see how I do all of it. Okay, now I left this little tab hanging off here. I don't really think that's an issue. I could trim this right now with the razor saw. And, uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to keep it one nice clean block. Get this extra gooey stuff and this little extra bit of two-sided tape out of the way. Keep the work table free of goo. Put that away as you, uh, just so you can see it again, U glue. Maybe you can find it. Let's see if we can find the beginning of this tape. There we go. Okay, I gotta move the camera up a little bit. Sorry, that was just, uh, too close to work with.
sorry if that was off camera. So I'm doing three times around on each one of these servos. I did three or four times around this way and I'm doing three times at each servo. So as you can see, I've got one nice little board here with all three, all four servos, and that is going to drop right in there. And that should work just fine. So I'm going to put some uh, servo arms here and do a little testing. Make sure everything moves smoothly, that I'm not uh, bumping up against stuff. The nice thing about this all being tape is, let's say I decide, you know, these things need to be a little, um, a little askew of each other. In other words, uh, this one needs to be down a little bit, not enough so that the horn catches on, on this servo, but just a little bit that it narrows up the whole assembly. So, you know, slide this one this way this one that way that one you know I think you understand where I'm going if I need to do that it's all tape um, a few minutes with the uh, exacto blade and uh, peeling it all and it's all undone so um, no big deal so I'm gonna stop the video here I'm gonna put on some control horns and uh, I'm gonna test this out with the servo tester make sure that um, I can uh, I can get clearance in there okay uh, my thought was correct that I was gonna need to unwrap it and uh, adjust the spacing stagger the uh, servos a little bit um, that way they they fit um, you it's not just a matter of getting them in this uh, aperture here um, you're gonna need room for a push rod to attach on the outside uh, or top side of the servo arm now the fuselage does bulge a little bit this is not the widest point um, and um, I'm using uh, this set of arms if you're using the same servo I recommend uh, cutting down to the uh, um, down to the second hole uh, so in other words we can use either the first or second hole I would trim it uh, at the third hole location and um, we should be able to just run the wires like I have them here uh, along the uh, bottom edge um, underneath these parts I mean that will rub on the wire but it's it's not going to rub so much and so frequently that it's going to cause problems likewise here uh, once the arm is in place, um, I may even do a, a loop of tape at each location uh, just to kind of keep the wires tucked or just leave them like this and um, tape them together here at the back like a little harness. And uh, then this whole uh, assembly can be dropped in to the fuselage like that once these are cut to size everything will fit better because right now it's they're both touching but as you can see everything fits and this is the narrower we're starting to narrow in up here um, the ones back here are going to be have even more room um, so the receiver will be uh, back here where my two fingers are and then we'll be able to take our battery and uh, use a little bit of velcro and uh, stick it here and that way we can you know move it forward and back a little bit to fine-tune our CG um, I'm gonna pull this off that's just getting in the way likewise with this little sticker here
so um, that's going to leave the uh, I'll probably actually move this up a little further um, right now I can't push it any further because of, of uh, you know the fact that this is narrowing in on these two horns I haven't cut them yet um, but that's going to leave the majority of this nose uh, available for uh, adding some ballast um, could just tuck the uh, I mean I would need to move these back a little bit like that and then I could uh, put the battery in front and uh, then add ballast from there um, I don't think that's gonna leave enough room to be able to access the servos let me try with the shorter chunkier battery I put this one up here I don't know I'll have to test that because that would be nice to be able to just drop this in and just have a wire going across the top and uh, I could still fit some lead up here if I if I need more weight um, I don't like this wire being right against the servo there but uh, I could probably like take some of that uh, narrow tape and uh, run it right around like this so that the uh, the battery lead comes straight out the center of the battery that would work and so it would be kind of like this and I definitely like the idea of using the the larger battery I'd rather um, gain weight through um, through a, a larger battery than just add useless lead weight to compensate I mean they're not they're not that different but I mean this one is definitely heavier and um, I'd, you know all things being equal I'd rather have uh, the extra hundred milliamp of power uh, to extend flying time without having to switch batteries um, I mean, so that's a simple equation to make in your head right there so the question will be if this will fit back there with servo servos plugged into it um, now there's also another option as far as these go which would be to uh, lift these little tabs right here and pull the pins out um, stick the pins onto the posts and then put a little bit of uh, of liquid tape Sorry for bouncing the camera. This stuff is fantastic uh, to put on electronics, uh, like for car ESCs and stuff like that, where you've got a lot of exposed uh, fittings and a lot of exposed solders to just blob some of this on. Uh, it's totally non-conductive and um, it's waterproof and it's quite, quite handy stuff. Um, so that would, um, would shorten this plug probably about to here it would t knock off about three millimeters of plastic and when we're dealing with something this small three millimeters of plastic might be all it takes to make this configuration with this battery not work whereas doing it the way I just described might make all the difference in making it work so that's uh, that's something I may do no matter what um, just to have a nice clean install without having to bring all this plastic along for the ride so we'll see um, so what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm going to trim my horns down to size and uh, mount horns here and here and then I'm gonna lower this in and check my clearances and such and then I'm going to start working on um, linkages. I think this plane is going to go together very quickly, all things considered. Um, I'm very happy with this. Um, I think this is going to work great. Uh, it's one of the cleaner installs I've seen. Um, you know, there's uh, th this is going to just either two-sided tape, uh, like a, a nice. Uh, foam tape um, like uh, the 3M clear 
stuff will probably uh, be the way to go or some hot glue. I don't know, I'm kind of kind of shy on hot glue when it's around electronics, but we'll see. I think the two-sided tape might work great. I'd probably want to uh, clean this up with some uh, um, alcohol and, uh, and maybe sand it, I'll rough it up a little bit um, just to help that tape get a good grip. Um, it might work better on a smooth surface. At, at the very least, I am going to clean this up because this is definitely going to have uh, some mold release on it um, that I'll want to get off and uh, make sure that this is going to attach solidly. Uh, the advantage of the two-sided tape also is that um, if I make the two-sided tape, uh, you know, let's say an eighth of an inch wider than the uh, piece of um, uh, fiberglass here, like an eighth on either side of overlap, I can capture the wires onto that extra tape so that the, uh, the wires stay tucked down low uh, running along the bottom and uh, don't get in the way of anything. So that's something to, uh, to think about too. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and uh, uh, get cutting and testing and pick it up after that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.